in his first speech since leaving the uh, White House. Former President Trump slammed President Biden yesterday for failing to keep his promise to reopen schools within the first 100 days while he was in office. Now, the debate on reopening schools has become strictly political and one-sided with the teachers' union and teachers' unions across this country widely opposing these efforts while children continue to suffer and pay the price. And joining us now to talk more about this is Alex Scarlatos. He's the National Director of Development at the Freedom Foundation. He's also a former National Guard soldier, and you might recognize him from the story 315 to Paris, the real story, and the movie directed by Clint Eastwood. Alex, great to see you again. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. There, there is mounting evidence every single day that it is safe to reopen schools. We've seen this in states like Florida. Uh, we know Republicans are on the side of reopening schools. President Trump made that very clear. But what we don't know is why and for how long President Biden and these teachers unions can keep this charade going where they say it's too dangerous for them to go back to schools. Well, I think they're um, losing, I guess, public opinion every day. I mean, you've got everybody else going back to work. Teachers unions are the last holdouts, basically. And then, of course, you've got the story that you mentioned before going to break, which is just a shocking example of hypocrisy. Yeah, you know, we don't always uh, know what these teachers unions are going to do, but we know in this case. And we also have um, a specific example here, I think, that's pretty egregious to a lot of folks. You saw this, I think, out in California. There was a um, a group known as Guerrilla Moms are now calling out the president of the Berkeley Teachers Union in California for his hypocrisy. His name is Matt Meyer. He's been a strong advocate for schools to remain closed unless teachers are fully vaccinated. But a video has surfaced now of Meyer dropping off his daughter at an in-person private preschool. And this is what we've come to see. Again, rules for thee, but not for me. Well, absolutely. I mean, you've got teachers, a lot of whom who do want to get back to work. You've got students who definitely want to go back to school, and it's the union leadership in most cases that are holding everyone back and saying, no, we need to stay closed. A lot of times money, even though they really don't need it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're staying home. They don't need more money. It's not more expensive to do that. And then those same union leaders that are holding everybody up are taking their kids to private school while everybody else has to stay home and stay home from work. You know, it's interesting, uh, his response, because he was asked by a local PBS affiliate, KQED, about this. And he said that his job is to advocate for teachers in his union uh, and where he sends his own children is a personal choice. But again, this exposes kind of something that's, I think, really odious to a lot of people, is, is that schools don't exist for teachers and teachers unions. Schools exist for the kids. Well, absolutely. And I just hope that people have had enough of this and that teachers have had enough of this and moms and dads who send their kids to school or can't send their kids to school right now have had enough of this. I mean, the teachers unions really need to kind of take a look inward. They're fighting everybody else. And it just seems like maybe they might wake up one day and realize that they're wrong and they need to change something about how they do business. Well, Alex, we've got a couple minutes left here. I wanted to ask you about, I know you're new to this position, fairly new as the National Director of Development at the Freedom Foundation, but tell us what you're working on uh, besides getting these schools reopened? Well, the Freedom Foundation goes after public sector unions as a whole. Um, our main goal is to just get people out of public sector unions like the teachers unions, just because they give money almost exclusively to one party. And so, I mean, in my race, I ran for Congress last year. The uh, My opponent got about $700,000 from public sector unions. I got about 500 from a private union. And it's just egregious and we're just trying to keep union money out of politics and so hopefully union leadership can worry about their members and not about giving to political races and um, just being very one-sided in general. You know this is another issue too that uh, came up quite a bit at CPAC over the weekend specifically related to the teachers unions uh, because again it's teachers unions we're hearing about this now because schools are closed but these are the same type of problems you see with all the public sector unions uh it's using taxpayer dollars a lot of time forcing people to join these unions even when they don't really want to uh, those are the types of things we have to be concerned about right well absolutely i mean it's a vicious cycle because the problem is union membership they give money almost exclusively to democrats democrats then in turn grow government so that they can hire more union members and it really just is a vicious cycle that just continues to grow government and grow unions. And our goal is to stop that and, I guess, decrease the size of government like everybody else.
That would be nice if we actually saw the government, uh, the size of the government uh, shrink, but we never see that. I know you're fighting the good fight, Alex. Thanks so much. We appreciate your time. We'll talk to you again soon, and we'll definitely check in with you on your Thanks effort so to get rid of these public sector unions. Alex Garlato from the Freedom Foundation. All right.